What's up everybody, this is Mark Olsen. In this video we're going to talk about the rules of backgammon. First off, notice this board, how beautiful it is. One of my favorite boards from my collection. Handmade, wooden frame, FM gammon board from Turkey. Um, well, the rules of backgammon are quite simple. Essentially, it's a race. Whoever gets all of his 15 checkers off first wins the game. This is the starting position. And uh, as we talked about in the previous video, all games of backgammon start in this position. We have a couple of different elements of the game. First off, it's a dice game. So each player gets two dice each, and that's what you use every single turn. You roll the dice and you have to move whatever the dice say. The game starts by rolling one die each. So in this, this roll, I would win because I rolled a four, you rolled an ace. I got the highest one. I have to use this roll. That's what the rules say. You cannot re-roll. This is not tabla from Turkey. This is backgammon. Um, if we were to roll, let's say, a four and a four, we simply re-roll the dice and see who wins. Okay, again, I will win six, four. I would have to move a six, for instance, here, and a four here. Okay, so let's talk about um, the last thing about the dice. Oh yeah, one more thing about the dice. You have to move what the dice says. You cannot choose to just move one of the die. You have to move both dice. Um, if there's a legal move where you can use both of them, that, then you have to do it. You can't just move one and then say, ah, oh, I can't move the other one. Uh, that's the rules of the dice. Okay, next up, we've got the checkers and we got the points. The points are represented by these triangular shapes. The checkers are all the same. There's no difference between the checkers. We have 15 checkers each, and this is the starting position. Uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's rather simple. Uh, there's just two rules with regards to the checkers and the points. If a checker is alone on a point, it's vulnerable of getting hit. So for instance, let's say you were to roll a three and a one, you could hit my checker here by saying one, two, three. That would be a brilliant, brilliant move because you get to hit my checker and my checker goes to the bar and now has to start all over again over in your inner board in order to enter from the bar. The other rule with moving checkers is if you have two or more checkers on a point, you own the point. You conquered this point. Your opponent cannot move to this point. He is blocked. So for instance, if you were to rule, roll 5-3, you would not be able to move these checkers because 1-2-3 is blocked and 1-2-3-4-5 is blocked. That's why, by the way, it's very good to make a strong prime like this. This would be a five prime because you're preventing your opponent from escaping by blocking him making a prime. That's a little strategy tip. So let's go back to the starting position here. Here we go. Um, yes, so that's basically the rules with moving the checkers. We had one thing here. If I were to get hit, I, I have to go to the bar. The way to get in from the bar is that you have to start all over in your opponent's home board. You have to get in with this checker before you start moving any other checkers. So let's say I were to roll a 2 and a 1. Now I have the option to come in with a 1 or I could come in with a 1, 2. Both are perfectly legal. Let's say I had rolled 6, 2. Now I would be forced to come in with a deuce because the six is blocked. One, two, three, four, five, six, it's blocked. So I have to come in with a deuce and then move a six another place. Let's say I was this unlucky rolling double sixes. What a horrible roll. Why? One, two, three, four, five, six, I'm blocked. I have to stay in the bar and forfeit my turn. That would be strategy. So um, yeah, that's moving checkers. It's getting hit. You have to enter before you can start moving anything else. That's why the best thing you can do is to trap your opponent on the bar and close him out totally like this. This would be a full close out. When this happens, I cannot move. I just have to sit and wait for you to move all of your checkers. You start moving your checkers home. You start bearing them off. And then when you finally open up, then I can roll my dice again. Okay, let's go back here to the opening position. It was something like this. Five chickens here in the mid, and here we go. Okay, what else do we have on the board here? Then we have four quadrants. We've got one here, six points, one here, six points, six points, six points. This over here is my home board. 
This over here is your home board. And then we have the outer boards, my outer board, your outer board. The home boards are something special because the home boards, first of all, that's where the hit checkers has to enter. That's why it's good to occupy as many points in your home board as possible. Another feature about the home board is the home board is the demarcation of when you can start bearing off checkers. What do I mean with that? I mean that you have to get all 15 checkers into your own home board before you can start bearing off checkers. So let's see a position like this, for instance. I still cannot start bearing out checkers. For instance, if I were to roll a six here, I could not play one, two, three, four, five, six because I don't have all my checkers in my inner board. So I need to get all of these checkers in before I can start bearing off. Still, I'm not able to bear in, bear out checkers. I have to get this one in first. Boom, now I'm in bear off mode. All of my checkers left on the board is in my, are in my home board and now I can start bearing off checkers. So let's say a six, let's say, let's give me a roll here. Let's say I roll a six, two. The six is actually forced. I can only play this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a forced move. With the deuce, I can play many moves here. I can play one, two, I can play one, two, I can play one, two, this would be stupid because I would be leaving a shot. And what about this one? One, two, nope, blocked because you occupy this point. Okay, what if I was like this? Here I could play again, the six would be forced and then I could also take, now I can take out a checker with the deuce. Again, it would not be wise because I would be leaving a shot. Some players play with the homemade rules that you're forced to bear off a checker. This is not true. You're not forced. You can move any legal deuce that you want. So here the best do's would be either to play something like this or something like this. Both perfectly fine and this would be a blunder because you give your opponent a chance to hit you. Um, yeah, one more uh, homemade rule that I see sometimes. Um, when you've got five checkers on a point, some players believe that you are not allowed to put more checkers on that point. That's not true. You can put as many checkers as you want. Uh, notice that we don't really have much space here. So what we usually do is simply just put the checkers on top and we can do like this. I would put them here. Then it can be a little bit difficult to see. What I like to do is I like to just slide them here and then you can see the round shapes and you can see this point has nine checkers on it. So that's actually the rules of backgammon. One more thing. Now you know how to play. Now you know how to move. The scoring system of backgammon is a little bit special because unlike other board games where you have a binary outcome, win or lose, in backgammon you have six outcomes. You can win or lose a single, a double, or a triple. A double is also called a gammon, a triple is also called a backgammon. Um, so this actually makes the strategy even more interesting. Sometimes you want to play even more aggressive to try to win a double or a triple. Um, a, 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 a triple would be that I finish bearing off all of my checkers, all of my checkers, while you still have one or more checkers in my home board or on the bar. That would be a triple. And also, sorry, as well as you haven't got a single checker out, very important. So you have no checkers out and you still have a checker or more in my home board or on the bar. That would be a triple backgammon win. Three points for me, minus three points for you. A gammon or a double would be when I finish bearing off all my checkers and you haven't got a single checker out yet. You don't have any checkers in my home board or on the bar, but you still haven't managed to get a single checker out. That would be a gammon. That happens more often. The backgammons are rare. Only happens about 1% of the time when the computers play against each other. A little bit more often when humans play. Gammons are more frequent, probably like around a little bit less than 30% of the time you either win or lose by a gammon. A single win or loss would be that we are both in a racing position, we're both taking off checkers, and I finish, but you have one or more checkers out. That would be a single. Notice that it doesn't matter whether you have one checker out or you have 14 checkers out, it's still just a single game. One point for me, minus one point for you. There you have it. That's the rules of backgammon. Now go and play. Backgammongalaxy.com